All right, let's go ahead and get into our first one, which has to do with what's going on with the immigration Ohio type of stuff. So um, it's one of those things, again, this is titled Lies and Liars. And you guys know me, I'm blunt and I don't care who it is. Uh, if they're caught in a lie, they're caught in a lie and this type of stuff. So first things first, <clears throat> I know the main focus, not the entire focus, but the main focus on this has been joking about and, and throwing out memes and talking about, you know, the pets and, and you know, they're eating pets and stuff like that. Um, from what I've seen on this, I find it fascinating that um, there's evidence that points to both the whole pet eating thing being false as well as real. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you anything is true or false regarding that. I just find that fascinating. Um, but also coming with it, I find it interesting is um, when JD Vance, uh, who uh, was interviewed recently, um, he came out and explicitly said, sometimes we have to make stories in order to get uh, news attention uh, for these types of things. And he kind of put it out there saying that Trump was the one that was pushing um, the, the pet thing recently at a couple of his rallies. And so it, I think it's like whenever you see something like that, that tells me that, hey, this hand's doing something flashy. What's the other hand doing? Because that's always a misdirect, uh, in my opinion. They're trying to hide something behind it. They're trying to make a joke out of it. They're trying to push uh, a funny, light narrative over here. Funny, quote unquote. I don't actually mean it's funny that if there are pets being eaten, that's, that's funny. But you guys know what I'm saying. More of a light side to possibly something being much more dark. Now, if you know anything about the Haitians, um, voodoo. Haitians are big on voodoo. They're big on paganism uh, rituals. Uh, they do this stuff all the time in their country. That's why I was saying pray for Spencer right now because he's going into very dark territory. Um, and so they like to do this stuff. And it's not just animals. I don't recommend doing it. But if you do, be warned. Uh, but Haitians do it to people. Um, they're notorious for cutting up and sacrificing living beings, human beings to do this type of stuff. And so if they are actually practicing that, that stuff in uh, Ohio, um, then it would be not, it wouldn't be surprising if they were going to pets and, and whatnot. And I've seen, again, I'm not saying what's true and what's false, but the stories that I've seen is there's a lot of stories that are absolutely fake. Uh, there's the story that came out that the person who posts started the whole thing about, uh, uh, a Haitian stealing her pet posted on Facebook saying that she made it up again. If that's true or not, we don't know. Um, that's, that's the hard part is what do you actually believe is true or not? So I'm not taking a stand on that. Um, but ultimately what's going on is we have a misdirect. We have bad information. We have lies being told. And then we have lie, flat out liars that are pushing this narrative as well. And so let's go to the misdirect on this. Cause I believe this is very important when, again, when you see a story like pets being eaten, being promoted not only in the news, but also by people like politicians, something tells me most of the time, not always, but most of the time there's something else going on. And so I started digging, following a trail um, of what's going on when it comes to this immigration stuff. So follow along with me, uh, if you please. So we're going to start here. Uh, just get a an idea in case you have no idea any of the things that I just said for the past three minutes. Let's go ahead and clue you in so you know what's going on. It says Springfield, uh, Springfield, Ohio. This is more than Springfield, but we're just kind of centering on Springfield right, right now. It says Springfield sees influx of 15,000 Haitian immigrants seeking job opportunities. That is the key thing you want to pay attention to right now. Haitian immigrants, everybody's going, okay, immigrants. We see that. No, seeking job opportunities. That is the track that you want to follow on this. Why are they seeking job opportunities in Springfield, Ohio? That's where you want to start. It says around 15,000 Haitian immigrants are now living in the Springfield area. And with this dramatic influx in population, many are wondering why they have chosen to live here. Bingo. That's my question. Governor DeWine and the Haitian community say uh, that one of the biggest reasons is job opportunities. They are kind of looking for a safe place where they can raise their family and get a job, says Vaz uh, Dorzenaville. Uh, 
uh, president of the Haitian Community Help and Support Center in Springfield. As human beings, we have uh, the instinct of survival. Within the past three years, thousands of Haitian immigrants have fled their native country due to the increased political violence and have moved to Springfield, Ohio. They came to Springfield, Ohio for work, said DeWine. Many of them are working and filling empty positions in Springfield. Uh, the Haitian Community Help and Support Center in Springfield serves the immigrants of Springfield by helping them adapt to American society and connect them to potential employers. So we have an idea. So the, for the past three years, three years, what year is it? 2024. So about 2021. Well, what was going on 2020, 2021? What was going on? You want to hang on to that because that plays a part in this as well. But ultimately, what we got for the past three years has been an influx of specifically Haitian immigrants into Ohio. Again, they're just kind of focusing on Springfield, but uh, from what I've seen, it's all over uh, Ohio for job opportunities. So you scouring around, knowing the the immigration problems, not only in the United States, but Europe, there seems to be something else that's driving these people to coming in. We've all had the question. We all have theories. We all have ideas. Um, this isn't necessarily about, you know, trying to come up with any of that. I'm just trying to focus on specifically this. And so I went with the job thing. What is going on when it comes to immigration, Haitians, the Help and Support Center, as well as job opportunity? What's going on? Came across this. This is called Switchboard. And it is. Uh, it says, uh, Connecting Resettlement Experts. Welcome to our one-stop resource hub for refugee service providers in the United States. Switchboard provides tools, learning opportunities, research, and technical assistance covering a range of topics related to the newcomer experience. Some of the things that they handle is case management, child and family services, mental health and wellness, employment, monitoring and evaluation, identity, and inclusive services. This is a uh, NGO, non-governance uh, non uh, organization, that is designed to connect uh, experts on immigration to employers, to healthcare, um, to uh, family services, to diversity and uh, equity type stuff. This is a place that is connecting immigration, the borderless problem, as well as uh, the job replacement, which came from 2020, as well as the ESG and DEI departments of most of these corporations. Their goal is to bring in immigrants and inject them into society. And this is how they're connecting it. Okay, I'm sure there's plenty of those. Well, is there something else behind it? There is. The IRC, International Rescue Committee, who heads up Switchboard, received competitive funding through the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Children and Families, grant number 90RB0052 and grant number 90RB0053. The project is 100% financed by federal funds. The contents of this website are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Child and Families. International Rescue Committee, as well as Switchboard, is 100% funded by the U.S. government to bring in immigrants and inject them into society to replace Americans. And one of the main beneficiaries of that is Ohio and the injection of 15,000 plus, I'll just say plus, because I believe that there's more, but I can't factually prove that, um, patients to take jobs and homes and positions, part of that, you know, re great replacement uh, type stuff that's going on, replacing Americans with all these people. This is part of the underlying problem. Now, this is just one. This is just one. There's many out there. So I went and I took a look at the grants. How much money is the U.S.? How much money are you, the taxpayer? How much of your money is getting paid to bring in illegal immigrants and to take your job? Well, let's take a look. First one, grant number 90RB0052. Ah, 
This started in 2018, this grand, grand total of 14 million, over 14 and a half million dollars to help fund this. And that one grant going to the Office of Ref Refugee Resettlement. Wow. That's just one grant. What about the other one? Well, this is grant number 90RB0053, also going to the Office of Refugee Resettlement, which is the IRC, one controlling switchboard. This one is a grand total of 15 million. So you got 14 and a half million plus 15 million going to the IRC to bring in illegal refugees and to take your job to take over your society and possibly take your pets as well, along with a bunch of other things. But here's the spiritual problem with this. They're bringing in the voodoo with them as well. We've already got a giant escalation of, of pagan practices of, of this stuff. Again, all throughout his, uh, United States history. And uh, I mean, it's all wrapped up, but now we're bringing in more of it. We are actively bringing in more of this spiritual stuff. You don't think that they're not bringing the demons with them? You don't think that they're bringing those dark spirits with them? They absolutely are. It's just a giant increase. But here's the thing. I found out that that wasn't just it for those grants. There's another one in here that wasn't necessarily listed for a whole lot more. This was the cooperative agreement. Again, it's still grant number 90 RB0052, but this comes from a different uh, grant tracking uh, site from the government. So they kind of split it to hide it, but I found it. I found it. This was awarded in 2018, September of 2018. Supposed to, uh, supposed to be completed here this month, actually. This one is 62 million. 62 million. Add that on to the other 30 million that we already took a look at. That is a lot of money being used for this. And it says the money is for Refugee Technical Assistance Program. Through the continuation of Switchboard, that's the program, ORR-funded organizations will have access to technical assistance, learning opportunities, resources, and research on resettlement-related topics. In year two, Switchboard will continue its work to help refugee service providers improve their capacity to provide evidence and strengthening-based services, address barriers that clients face, measure the quality and effectiveness of their programs, and communicate program Results. Why would they need to communicate program results? Because the government requires it. Why? Because this is a government operation that's being done. It's just being done in the form of an NGO, which, as we know, that's their way of getting away with this stuff, being not being attached uh, by by any way other than grants. Is it still in control? That's why you see, you know, all these other Bill Gates and George Soros and, and all these other ones out there. Take your pick. They always operate through these. NGOs or their their shell companies or or through um, charity organizations, but ultimately this is the United States government program in order to issue in the next phase of replacement. They want to replace you. They want to replace me, and this is how they're doing it. This is how they're doing it. Let's take a little bit more of a peek when it comes to how they're doing this when it comes to jobs. So, uh, Switchboard, this is their, their uh, documentation on their website. Um, it says, supporting clients during times of economic hardship. Hmm. According to the National Bureau of Economic Research, a recession is a significant decline in economic activity spread across the country, lasting more than a few months. Recessions come and go. The 2020 re recession ended a 128-month economic expansion, the longest in U.S. history. Oh boy. Lean, uh, lean economic times, which bring increased competition to fewer job openings can be particularly challenging for clients and the employment staff helping to facilitate the job search process. How can you continue to uncover meaningful career opportunities for clients and even strengthen your employer connections when the economy is struggling? This guide offer, offers practical suggestions and program examples you can reference as you uh, and your clients triumph through tough times. 
And so we can see here responding to economic recessions as a job developer. During an economic recession, there are fewer available job openings and more candidates, some of whom have been laid off looking for work. According to data released by the Department of Labor in March 2021, when these grants were put in, guys, there were 9.7 million unemployed people in the U.S., which is 4 million higher than pre-pandemic levels in February of 2020. Recessions are challenging times for clients and job developers, but you can implement strategies to help clients weather a current recession or prepare a future one. Getting ahead of a job developer when economic times are tough requires creative strategies and focusing on three aspects, the market, your employer network, and clients. Okay, so before we go further, there's another thing I want to show you in there. They're focusing on the 2020 recession. Why is that? As I've said, there was so many prongs to 2020. There wasn't one specific, two specific, three specific things for the 2020 stuff, the event. There was so many more to it. One of them had to do with decimating the job market so they can bring in the immigrants to replace you in that job. They decimated the market and then replaced you after the jobs started coming back with cheaper labor that doesn't require any benefits and it's overall better for them. Ultimately, <laughs> just uh, however you want to word it, they're, they're taking it from us. So let's, uh, let's take a look here. This is also in the report. It said, focus on hidden job markets. While researching growing industries may provide some new leads, keep in mind that a very high percentage of jobs, some say, and you can see the uh, business insider thing there, up to 80% or 70% are, hit, are in the hidden job market. In other words, available jobs that have not been posted publicly. What does that mean? We're going to lay you off and then we're going to bring the jobs back quietly underneath and only let these immigrant places like the IRC know about the jobs. So when they bring in the immigrants, they can hand them off with nobody knowing. This is why I always talk about when you look at things like the job reports, uh, the market stuff, anything like that, it is rigged, it is rigged, it is rigged. You can't believe any of that trash because of stuff like this. If you have hidden jobs all over the place, that stuff is not meant to go on the job report. So you have no idea. We have no idea. It just looks like those jobs, you know, that uh, aren't coming back or this. That's why they mold things together. Well, uh, part-time jobs get folded into this to make it look like there's more jobs in the type of thing. It's it's absolutely rigged. It's The books are cooked. It's beyond cooked now. They're, they're fried to a crisp. But when you have hidden jobs that only peop, uh, certain organizations can find, well, ultimately... We're kicking you out. We're bringing in cheaper labor and we're not going to tell you about it. This is really what's going on. This is how they're getting this stuff done. This is why we continue to see a giant spike in this type of stuff. It goes on to say these openings are often due to changes in life circumstances, such as employees who retire, move on, or are fired or laid off. Uh, job opportunities like these are available even during economic recessions. <laughs> oh, you don't say. In times when job applicants are in greater supply, employers may be less likely uh, to invest their resources in advertising positions. They don't need to because they have a cheaper labor market being uh, pushed over the border for them. Identifying jobs in the hidden market, uh, hidden job market is an effective strategy because there are less competition for positions before they are made public. The best way to find these jobs is to stay in touch with current contacts like IRC here, if you're not from America, uh, and to expand your network of new contacts. The more employers and professional contacts you talk to, the higher your chance of uncovering hidden jobs. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And this is just one. One. There are many, many, many more uh, programs like this, which is why we continue to see not only Haitians coming across, but we continue to see South Americans. We continue to see Chinese. We see what's going on with the Venezuela things, which, again, I, I looked further. If you guys weren't, don't know, 
uh, maybe you guys don't remember, but a couple of weeks back, I said I was going to look further into uh, the whole thing of the slum lord who uh, happened to have court dates that were pushed back because the Venezuela gangs got in there. I hit a brick wall on that, but I'm I, I, again, I'm not going to say for sure because we don't know for sure, but I myself am pretty confident that there's some type of backdoor deal going on uh, when it comes to that type of stuff. These things are absolutely being controlled. Now, obviously, not, not all of them because there are those ones that just decide that they're just going to try and get across into the country. That's been going on, well, ever since border borders were invented. Um, but ultimately, these mass migration stuff, the replacement, everything like that is indeed happening. So I dug a little bit more into IRC and we got the IRC launches welcome core uh, support line to support private sponsors coming from New York, March 22nd of this year, 2024. So today the international rescue community, IRC, they're the ones behind switchboard announced the launch of the welcome core uh, support line, a new initiative to support everyday Americans and navigating the resettlement process for refugees sponsored through welcome core. Um, the WCSL will provide technical assistance to Welcome Core private sponsor groups in the form of general uh, resettlement guidance, access to shared learning resources, information about local community supports, and referrals to Office for Reg uh, Refugee Resettlement funded programs like Switchboard. That's exactly what we just read on the grant page. It says the goal of the Welcome Core support line is to be a resource for uh, private sponsor groups and a bridge between refugee newcomers, their sponsors, and local community service providers to facilitate efficient and effective enrollment and additional programs. So if we look at the sponsors of the IRC Welcome Core, we see several of them. We see Alight, ECDC, Home for Refugees, Iris, World Relief, Catholic Charities of Syracuse, Exodus World Service, International Institute of St. Louis, Jewish Vocational Service, Welcome NST, CWS, HIAS, the IRC, Rainbow Railroad, which is the alphabet group, the YMCA, the U.S. Department of State, Welcome.us, and IRAP. And those are just the sponsors for this particular uh, program. And they all support bringing in the refugees and injecting them into this whole agenda that's being done to knock down the borders and to replace the U.S. Americans. So while many focus on the whole pet thing, I believe that's just one giant distraction that we have no idea is true or not. And I know there's a lot of people out there that put it out. Uh, you know, it's like, well, I, I know a guy who knows a guy who said that his pet was stolen and stuff. No offense. I can't take that as credible. I don't know who you are. I don't know your friend who knows their friend. I, I, I can't take that as credible. It's when we start going down stuff like that. You, you guys remember back in the day, you know, kindergarten playing the game of telephone. You know, you all sit in the line. Somebody whispers something into your ear and you go down the line and ultimately you get to the end and it's completely different story at that moment. That's ultimately what goes on when I see stories like that. I need to see something uh, personally um, on, on stuff like that. I don't, it's, that's why it's, there's, it's so hard when it comes to the, the, the news stuff, because there's always some type of bias, uh, in there. And I've warned about that. You got to be careful about bias. And sometimes it's not done purposely. Sometimes, you know, that's just how humans go. We just type exaggerate stuff. I got to spice this up a little bit. If I'm not spicy enough, then it might not, uh, catch the wind that I want it to catch, um, type of deal. So, but when it comes to this, there's obviously a lot more going on. We understand that this is a program that has been going on for a very long time. Uh, that's no surprise. We've seen it actually start to unfold. We see the detriments uh, that's happening, vandalism and lawlessness and murders and 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 um, other stuff, uh, sexual assaults and, and, and everything like that um, that's increasing. Well, I'm here to tell you they're getting into the next phase. And it's getting worse. And they're bringing their voodoo with them. Not only are they bringing the drugs, not only are they bringing the gangs, not only are they bringing the violence and the sexual assaults and the robberies, but now they're bringing the voodoo with them. And this is going to get worse. There's no way to stop this. That's my biggest thing. When you have government agencies that are working through NGOs like this, you, it's not going to stop. And that doesn't, and, and I'm sorry, 
actually, I'm not sorry. I'm just going to be completely blunt because that's how I operate. Having somebody in there who's sitting there going, I'm going to wall the border who wants to use that as an excuse to bring in uh, facial recognition and biometric identification and, and tracking and surveillance is not going to change this. This is the biggest thing that I'm trying to tell people is there's no stopping this. If the walls are coming down. The border walls are coming down and nobody is going to fix it. I know somebody, it's like, oh, why you got to be like that, man? Because it's just, nobody else has done it like that. It's just, this is how it's going to happen. This is how it's going to happen. So this is the next phase of this great replacement, as well as the removals of the borders. Again, 2020 was uh, built um, for many different things, including one of them being reducing the jobs, creating a, a, a silent hidden job market for this program to move forward and other programs as well. And again, the focus has been on the pets and the animals, but there's obviously, again, this is another situation of when the hand is doing this, what's this hand doing? And it's not just here. I've warned about this as well. Um, it's uh, Europe's worse. Europe is worse. They've been worse. Um, <laughs> let's, let's just go, let's go right here. They've got their own thing going on. Germany to welcome Kenyans in labor deal. It says Berlin has agreed to allow skilled and semi-skilled Kenyan workers in the Germany in a controlled and targeted labor migration deal. Does this sound familiar? Does this sound familiar at all? It's like the same thing we just we just covered. It's we got jobs. Come and take the jobs of the Americans. Or in the case, come and take the jobs of the, the Germans. We forget our own people. We don't care about them. We want cheap. Uh, labor that doesn't require any type of benefits at all, bring them in. Again, this is the agenda. This is the globalist agenda in action. It says Kenya is struggling with increasing difficulties in uh, providing work and sufficient income for its young professionals while Germany is facing a shortage of skilled labor. The German government has said that uh, has said that the deal does not specify the number of workers who will be allowed in. <clears throat> Hang on to that. We're going to answer that in a second. It says the German government has said the deal does not specify the numbers of workers who will be allowed in. I believe that they did, and it was a slip up, and I'll show you in a second. So hang on to that. We'll come back. It says migration agreements are a central pillar in German government's uh, efforts to curb immigration. The agreement will also simplify the uh, repertoire. Trishions of Kenya, yeah, of Kenyans who are in Germany without legal permission. Five Kenyan bus drivers have already welcomed to Flensburg uh, in the north of Germany in a pilot project. Okay, so it says does not specify the number. I believe that they did. Um, yeah, just again, hang on to that. I want you guys to remember to hang on to that. Immigration is a huge issue in Germany at the moment, uh, following the rise in popularity of the right anti-immigration part, whatever. Uh, successive governments in Berlin have allowed relatively large numbers of asylum seekers to settle in the country in recent years. Germany took in more than 1 million people, mostly fleeing war in countries such as Syria during the 2015 to 2016 uh, immigrant crisis and have received 1.2 million Ukrainians since Russia's full-scale invasion began in February of 2022. Again, that's another outcome of the whole Russia-Ukraine thing, was to push uh, more immigration. The labor deal was signed in Berlin by Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Kenya's President William Ruto. Germany agreed to ease some of its immigration laws to okay, <laughs> urge to ease some of the immigration laws. Do they not see what's happening in Europe? Let's lighten it up, guys. Let's bring in more of them, shall we? That's that's the right thing to do. It's just, again, these people aren't stupid. I know a lot of people look at this and go, how stupid can they be? No, no they're not stupid. They're being told what to do by people who are much smarter than they are, who are controlling all of what's going on right now. These people are not stupid. They're just being told what to do. And it's working perfectly. Look at what's going on in Europe and the United States right now. It says, uh, again, Germany agreed to ease some of the immigration laws to enable Kenyans to find employment in Europe's biggest economy. Authorities in Berlin will also consider extending temporary residence permits for Kenyan workers who have secured an approved job. 
Kenyans will also be issued with long-term visas to study or do, vo do vocational training in Germany. Okay, let's get back to the number that supposedly the government did not release of how many they want in. Correction, 14th of September, 2024. An earlier version of this article put a figure on how many Kenyan workers would be allowed into Germany under the deal. The German Interior Ministry corrected this to state that the deal did not specify a figure. What was the uh, figure? 250,000 Kenyans. Not 250, 250,000 Kenyans. That was the initial report that came out coming from the guy who was involved with making this deal. And then the German government said, oh, no, 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 no. We did not uh, say the amount. Now, they never said that they didn't actually make an amount. They just said, no, 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 no. We never specified what that amount was. I believe that that was a rollback to try and just wipe out the number because they understand 250,000 new immigrants. They don't want that out there, but it's out there. I believe that was a slip up. I actually believe that they made a deal for 250,000 Kenyans to go into gym, uh, to Germany. It says Ruto uh, told DW, Germany's state broadcaster, that one of the deals signed between Kenya and Germany would unlock 250,000 job opportunities for Kenyans. 250,000 in the silent, hidden job market. Not going to Germans. Yeah. One of them is agreement we signed. This agreement will unlock 250,000 job opportunities for young people from Kenya. That is a bilateral agreement between Germany and Kenya, Ruto told DW. So Germany's interior ministry uh, dismissed the BBC World Report, stating that the information about the 250,000 jobs was false and that the agreement did not include specified job numbers. <laughs> I think it did. You just had a slip up. This information is clearly false, right? The agreement between Germany and Kenya does not include any numbers or quotas of skilled workers who will have the opportunity to work in Germany. All applicants must fulfill the strict requirements of the German Skilled Immigration Act. Okay. The ministry said in a statement. Yeah. This is not just a tear down United States. This is a full on borderless replacement agenda being done against the West specifically of what's going on. Um, man, just everything that's happening right now is there's so much more going on behind the scenes. I, I haven't even scratched the surface, but I think that helps us get a better understanding of really the deals being done. Uh, it really doesn't matter who is sitting in what chair anymore it's it's going to happen this is something that i i wish we as as christians as prophecy watchers um and i know a lot of a lot of people do uh they, they they've gotten it they get it now but there's still so many that just don't get it there is no fixing this there is a spiritual evil uh, that is over all of this stuff that is happening right now, that is just gaining more and more ground to accomplish these agendas. And I don't care who it is. I don't care at, in what position they are in the world, what country they're in. Having one person come in uh, is is not going to do anything. This is like, you know, the, the cartoon of the, the kid who walks up to the dam and, and there's a, you know, a little bit of water coming out of a crack and he puts his finger in there. All of a sudden, 5,000 more holes pop up and it just starts draining even faster. That's what's going to happen. That's what is happening. And it's been happening for a long time. 